Hello all, welcome to Osmosis Technical Video Series of Ionic Framework. We shall discuss some Ionic Framework tips. In this video, we shall discuss about how to resolve the Google authentication issue, how to keep the Google Access Token alive, and how to resolve the spawn ACES error in iOS. Let us start our discussion with how to resolve Google authentication issue. Here, we have a login screen with a button at the bottom of the screen that allows the user to log in through their Google Plus account. Let us look at the code for the login template. Here is a code for the login template and this is a button for Google Plus and on click of this button, we will trigger a login with Google method. Let's see what is there in login with Google method. Let's go to the login controller and then to login with Google method. Here we are calling a method login Google of social user service which allows the user to sign in with his google credentials and then returns an access token and a refresh token as response and now we provide the access token as a parameter to get google user meta method which in turn returns the user's basic information from their google plus account once we get the user basic details we perform some processing and we can call our own API if it is needed. For the time being, we are just displaying an alert message which says successfully logged in with the username. In the same way, if it is an error, we display an error message to the user. Now, let's try it. I am logging in with my Google Plus credentials. And now, I'm clicking on the allow button. If you see in here, we got an error message saying invalid credentials. Let us see what is the actual cause of this problem. In our app, we have set up a common factory called HTTP proxy, where all the web service calls are sent from a single place. Let us have a look at it. It has a post and a get method and internally we are calling another method called call web service where we are setting up the required tokens in the header in order to call our own API. So when we call Google API method with $HTTP, these tokens will already be there in the header. Google validates it and it assumes like a security threat and returns an error saying invalid credentials. Let us see how to fix this issue. Solution is quite simple. Whenever we are going to call Google API methods, we have to clear the $HTTP header tokens so that we will not be in a trouble. So let us write the code to delete the tokens. We will write this prior to call any Google API. Now let us go to the login controller. In here, we are writing the code to delete the tokens. Now let's run the app again and try to log in. I'm clicking on the login button. And now clicking on the allow button. Yes, that's a success. We have got an alert that displays a success message. That's it. By deleting the tokens using these two lines of code, we have resolved the issue. This is not a generic issue. It will not be faced by the users who are not using custom headers or web APIs. This error occurs only when we are using our own APIs or headers and we have provided the solution for the same. Now, let us discuss about how to keep the Google Access token alive. Here, we have a login screen with a Google Plus button at the bottom of the screen. If we look at the code template, we are triggering a method login with Google on this button click. Now go to the login controller and in here is the login with Google method. In here, we have invoked another method open Google in app browser by passing Google client ID and a client secret key. It is a best practice to have these constants defined externally for a better structure. In 
open Google in app browser method, we will open Google sign in page in the browser where the user will log in with their Google Plus account. And when this process is done, the browser will be closed and we will make a call to Google Plus API by passing the data and URL as the parameters. And in response, it provides a refresh token and the user's access token. We will save these tokens in the local storage for the further use. Along with these tokens, we will get a property called expires in which defines the expiry time of the access token. Generally, the expiry time of the access token is 3600 seconds, that is one hour. For the time being, we just display the user with an alert message saying your access token will expire in these many seconds. Now, let's try the login feature. As I've logged in previously, it directly takes us to the permission screen. And now we need to click on the allow button and we can see that the alert message is displayed saying your access token will expire in 3600 seconds. Let's move on. As we got the access token from Google, we will use the access token to get the user details using get user data using access token method. In here, we are making a call to Google API by passing access token as a query parameter and we define a success and an error callback. Usually we get the details in the success response, but after one hour, the token expires and it returns the error callback saying invalid access token. So we get the error code as 401 in the error object. When the error callback is triggered, we need to update our access token. For this, we are invoking refreshed Google token method in the error response. There, we will call Google API to refresh the access token by passing refresh token, which is previously saved in the local storage, along with Google client ID and client secret ID as parameters. It returns a new access token valid for another 3600 seconds. Now we will replace the access token, which is already in the local storage with the latest access token. By following this approach, we can keep the user locked in for the most possible time. One thing to remember here is a refresh token can be used at most 25 times to refresh an access token. Hence, this is a way to keep the access token alive. Now, let us discuss about how to resolve the spawn ACES error in iOS. When we clone the project from Git that was created in Windows OS and try to build it in Mac, then we'll get a spawn ACES error. The main reason behind this issue is when the project is created in the Windows machine, NTFS file system that is used in the Windows OS will cause a permission issue in Mac. To demonstrate this issue, we are using a sample project which is hosted in our local Git. Source code is not included with this video. Hence, use your own sample code while following this video. Now, let us see it practically. Clone the project from the GitHub. Now, I'm running the command to clone the project. The command is being processed. Now we have successfully cloned the project. Now let's move to the project. I'm running the command. We have moved to the project. And now let's add a platform for iOS using ionic platform iOS command. Now I'm running the command. Now we see the error. It is showing the spawn ACES error. Here is the reason behind the error. The reason is platform underscore class.js file is not having the execution permissions. 
So we have to give the manual permissions to the files by running the below command. Now run this command to give execution permissions to the file. The execution process is complete and now we need to remove the platform and add it once again. Now I'm executing the command for removing the platform. Now I'm typing in the command to add the platform. The command is being processed. Finally, we have added the platform to the project successfully. So by providing the execution permissions, we have resolved the issue. Thank you. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos.